Hey guys, welcome back to my art and self-improvement podcast. I'm Katie and I'm a life coach and artist. I'm a life coach for artists. I help artists stop procrastinating on their art so that they can get paid doing what they love. I struggled with anxiety, depression, self-loathing, so much self-sabotaging behaviors, and this is my weekly update on how I'm improving my mindset and my life one podcast at a time. Okay, guys, I'm telling you, you want to listen to this to the very end. I promise this is my best episode yet. So let's just dive right in. Okay, this week, I learned a lot about a sick, kind of twisted part of the human brain. It's this. We totally enjoy being unhappy. Seriously, let me explain. I have a lot of bills coming up. Very big ones. The kinds that make you go like, (laughs) you know? But funnily enough, earlier this year when the bill deadline was farther away, I was way more terrified of it. I was working hard and like really, really grinding. Seeing the number of a, of a bill that I need to pay would just send me into fear and, you know, all the time feeling like I was under the gun. That very much did not serve me. I was left super drained and even though it felt like I worked a lot, there was a ton of procrastination going on because my mind was so unmanaged. Now, those bills are much closer and I actually have less cash because I invested it back into my business, but I'm so much more calm than I was at the start of the year. I'm creating coaching content that feels so true to my heart. I'm making artwork that feels more and more like I'm what, what I'm meant to create every day. I love my work. I love my process. I love my job. I trust myself and the universe that I will take care of myself, that I wouldn't let anything bad happen to me. I don't avoid anymore, like far from it actually. I'm super itching to share this message with you because it's so good and to work on my art and my next piece and my next piece. So what happened? How am I not just spiraling into panic or self-pity or despair during moments like this? When I come across an obstacle, how does it just like not throw me off completely and then take me down for the count for a long time before I then get back up again, get back up again? Because I 100% believe that my thoughts create my results, that I create my results. So in these crucial moments, I don't have time to think thoughts that don't serve me. I've seen it firsthand how ineffective it is to think thoughts from not enoughness, right? From scarcity, from from not being kind to ourselves, really. Let's say something important on my to-do list got forgotten. When I'm thinking thoughts like, God damn it, Katie, you are such a mess. You are so disorganized. You're never going to get it together. You're not going to make it. That just makes me feel pretty shit. It makes me feel kind of hopeless. And when I'm feeling hopeless, I want to avoid, especially my calendar, since I got punished for that. I need to take a break, you know, from those thoughts, right? So I numb those thoughts with YouTube, with whatever. And I just disregard the plan and work haphazardly. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm in like a tizzle and worry that like, you know, oh, I don't even have time to plan. Like I just, I'm just gonna do it. And it's like super chaotic. I'm beating myself up so my confidence is eroded, so I don't show up, I don't make art, which only proves further, all of this, only proves further that I am a mess. I see it often, especially because I self-coach myself and I work on my self-awareness and I see it on paper too during self-coaching, I see it very clearly how unhelpful these thoughts are. I'm in a Facebook group of business owners and someone was asking, should, should she get a job as she's growing her business so that she won't be so fearful all the time about paying her bills? The head coach said to this person, you could, or you could just see the number in your account or the bill in front of you. And instead of allowing your brain to go into fear and despair, you could use that as a reason to go out and create money. 
not by stealing or tricking or any kind of like, you know, manipulative or, or like not very ethical tactics, but just by being valuable, just by being of service in whatever kind of service or product you offer. You could just never allow your brain to think those kind of thoughts, no matter the circumstance that you have. If she really couldn't get herself out of the fear, then okay, get a job, but it's not actually necessary. After hearing this, I don't know why, but it just hit me like, wait, <laughs> that's even possible? Like to just not allow your brain to go there. Yes, even after all this mindset work, sometimes you just need to hear something the right way or at the right time. And so I just really committed to believing that I don't have time to be unhappy. I don't even remember what, but something happened this week that made me want to go into that unhappiness. And what I mean by unhappiness, I mean it more in the sense of like, like this, like where your brain, my brain wanted to think I wasn't good enough, that I'm incompetent, that I don't do things right, that I'm running out of time, that I'm never gonna get it together. I'm not talking about things like grief, right? Like when something you, you would want to be upset about. I'm talking about like self-inflicted pain kind of unhappiness. Anyway, so I saw myself starting to go down that path and then I remembered, okay, wait, I don't have time for that. I've got people to serve and bills to pay. What's more useful to think? And in that moment, I lifted a 10 ton weight inside my brain and I thought something way more positive, way more useful about myself and about how this was the right thing and how I could learn from this for the future. I just didn't allow it. I just didn't let my brain go there. And guys, this is the part that I remember. This was so strange, but I could feel the withdrawal of that. Oh, oh my God, I could feel like how good it would just be to just go down that negative spiral. It would just feel so good to blame myself. When we blame ourselves, we get to abdicate responsibility. We get to just write ourselves off that something is wrong with us and that's why we can't reach our goals. So then we can just go watch YouTube in bed all day. We get to take no uncomfortable action. It just feels like a really sick high. And it's tough, like I know you guys know what I'm talking about, it's tough. If you can imagine how hard it would be for a drug addict to stop taking drugs, right? Or even like a smoker to stop smoking, this is why it's so difficult to like break bad, quote unquote, bad habits, it's so similar to that. It's hard work to actually think something positive when your brain is so addicted to indulging in the self-pity and the self-loathing. So we've talked a lot about how the brain is mostly negative and doesn't want to change and all that, but this really hit me that like we enjoy being miserable. I think before this, it really felt to me like it's this it's just this natural thing that the brain does. It gets sucked into the, this pool of despair and insufficiency. But when I realized what my brain was actually doing is happily somersaulting in it with floaties and a pina colada, I was like, wait a second. No, 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 no way. Are you serious? Uh-uh, uh-uh, we are not doing that. It's kind of like when you have a child that comes home with bruises and you think they're being bullied at school. And then you find out that actually they are the ones starting the fight. Like they walk into it willingly and loves the adrenaline that they get from a punch in the face. That's the kind of shock that I felt when I kind of learned that about my brain. So how I approach parenting my brain now is quite different. It's like way less coddling. It's all rooted from a love that's bigger than the planet but it's with a more firm hand. It's understanding that of course my brain loves misery. It's easy, it's pleasurable, it abdicates responsibility, it's not hard, it's just like a habit, right? Um, but 
in that understanding, I have a more of a guiding hand towards like, oh, we're going to do something that's going to make us proud instead. It's like valuing my brain, knowing that it is capable of more than that. It's really believing in its best version, right? And not letting it indulge in its excuses. Sidetrack, coaching really is reparenting yourself. So when you're going down a self-loathing toilet of doom (laughs) into a beating self up habit or really any negative habit or pattern that you can tell is not serving you, I think you really need to admit to yourself that you want to do this. If you're doing it, you want to do it. If you don't do that, then you are always a victim to your brain. You lose all of your power and control. You'll develop distrust with your brain. And you'll never realize that one day you could want something different and make a different choice. Seriously, guys, think about this. It does not serve you at all to do something and say, I don't know why I did that. I didn't want to do that. But you did do it. If you did it, you wanted to do it. And now you can really check in with yourself about what's going on. Why did I want to do that? But if you lie to yourself, you're stuck. Same thing for if you didn't do something. A lot of us say we really want something like a better life, better art, better career, better relationships, better whatever, right? But then we don't do the thing that gets us there. If you keep telling yourself, okay, okay, I know I didn't do it, but I really want it. If you keep lying to yourself that you can't evaluate where you are so that you can actually truly want it, so that you can like reevaluate, right? You can study and kind of figure out why don't I want this right now? So that then you can actually get to a place where you really want it. So then you can actually get the result, right? Like nobody is just wanting not a better life, right? Like, like people want whatever it is that they have right now. (laughs) I thought about a habit that I'm so committed to no longer doing so that I can apply that mindset to this, um, to not beating myself up, to not think being mean to myself, to not be in insufficiency, right? For me, that's drinking. It's been something like three years since I've drank any alcohol and it was actually not very difficult for me to stop drinking completely because I have a very, very compelling reason. I'm so committed to not drinking because I am so sick of feeling terrified in social situations and I know that the way to make it less and less scary is to go to social events and not use alcohol to numb the anxiety and fear that I have that creates, you know, counterfeit confidence. I want the feeling of natural confidence, like not stalling in the bathroom to work myself up again, to go back into the party, not choking on my words when meeting new people, not in constant fear of what these people are thinking about me, not dependent on the alcohol. So that then I can just show up wherever with whoever without all the fear and worry and frustration. Life would just be so much easier I want that so much more than I want alcohol. Hands down, easy. It made it very easy to stop drinking alcohol for me. But here's the important part. I'm not committed to the action of not drinking. What I'm committed to is the thought, I don't want alcohol. I think of all the reasons I don't want it when I think that, right? Like, I don't like how it feels. I don't like hangovers. I don't like spending the money on it. And I really believe it, that I don't want it. So then I just don't want it. And it's super easy. If I'm only committed to the action of not drinking without changing my thought, then I'm going to be using a lot of willpower, right? Like I'm thinking, ugh. I want it, I want it, I want it. Oh my God, just a sip would be so good. Oh my God, just one beer, right? But then trying so hard not to drink when when I'm thinking like that, I want it, I want it. No, none of that. That's just exhausting. Like for me, it's it's just an identity that I'm not somebody who wants alcohol. So if beating myself up 
or anything, any of those kind of negative habits is, is something I want to break. The first step is realizing that it's something I want to do because it feels good. The same way I used to want alcohol. And then I found a very compelling reason to stop, to not allow my brain to go there, something that I want way more. After some journaling, my compelling reason is just that I want to stop hating myself way more than I want to beat myself up. That's it. I want the good feelings I get from accepting myself way more than the pleasure of beating myself up. I'm guessing this sounds like like it's so obvious, like of course everyone wants this, but I think it's really important to make it clear to myself that just like I really wanted the identity of someone that doesn't drink, I also really want the identity that I am someone who doesn't beat themselves up. I want that identity way more than I want the pleasure of fulfilling a negative habit. Because that is all that really is, a habit. And it feels really good to fulfill our habits because it's just so automatic and to just stay in our patterns. So seriously, what misery in your life do you need to admit to yourself that you actually want this so that then you can decide on purpose that you want something else more anyway i hope this was helpful if you're struggling with this kind of self-awareness like it just feels like your thoughts are just completely passing you by and you're not even making sense of much of it like they're just going through your mind and you don't have a clear process in order to study them so you can make changes, I can help. Or if you're sensing that you are able to notice the thoughts but you just can't seem to make a different choice, like these thoughts have such a tight grip on you, it feels like, and, um, and you aren't able to think more useful thoughts, I help with that too. Nobody taught us this. No one showed us how to use our brains, and life coaching does. I'll help you change your thoughts in a very organized, simple way. It's a process, and I teach you to do it on your own so that, so that yeah, you, you have that independence, and then you come to me, and then we just coach at an even deeper, lo- deeper level. So if you want to know more about changing your mindset, you can book a consult with me. Uh, there's the link in the description or you can DM me on Instagram if you'd like to like chat a little bit more first and just kind of get to know what a console is really like. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.